Okay, it is September 22nd. It's approximately 2.15 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, if anyone gives a... Why would you? Um, anyhow, I have decided to make a ridiculous video of the mug heater in action. Because I just made a cup of coffee. Because it's almost 2.30 and it's time for another cup of coffee. So, here you go. Prepare to be bored. There's the mug heater. You can see the enclosure with the Arduino and the relay in it. You can see the mug enclosure here with the temperature status LED. You'll see this changing from blue to green to red and the relay status LED. So when this LED is on, the relay is tripped and the warming plate right here um, is being warmed. <coughs> this is just my screwdriver. I finally put the lid to the Arduino back on. So, using the stock power switch from the mug warmer for, you know, cool points, I guess, we turn the unit on, the relay trips, it enters a while loop in the setup portion of the Arduino sketch that uh, allows the warming plate to heat up to the high point, the high temperature that I've allowed for in the code, um, just once, regardless of what the status is with the light sensor, you can see I can remove the mug or not, and um, nothing really changes. Uh, that allows the warming plate to heat up once before it starts to check to see if there's a mug there. Um, I do that because I generally come in, turn on my computer, turn on the mug warmer, go get my coffee and come back. And if you come back and you put your coffee on a cold warming plate, it just doesn't really do that much good. I seem to have spilled a little bit of coffee here. I can't, can't be having that. So, put the coffee back on. Again, you'll notice that the relay didn't trip um, when I moved it up and down. So this usually takes a couple minutes. It was cold. Uh, it's about 65 in my office right now. So, It'll take it a while to heat up to the max. I think that the maximum temperature is around, uh, it's 170 degrees Fahrenheit. So it'll take it a few minutes to, to get up to that. Once it heats up, um, you'll see the relay indicator turn off and this light will come on probably as red or green. Uh, then since the relay's off, the plate will begin cooling. As it cools, um, you'll see this turn blue, indicating below 115 degrees, I believe. Uh, once that happens, the relay will kick back on, take it back up to 170, in which case it shuts off. So, enjoy. I uh, am at work right now, so, well, technically I work out of my house. Um, so I have some work to be doing, so you'll probably hear the clackety-clacking of my kick-ass DOS keyboard. Um, I apologize for that. I know it can be a touch loud for the uninitiated. Uh, anyway, let's try to get the frame back. There we go. Do, 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 do. Like I said, it's time for my second cup of coffee. Well, third cup of coffee.
really does change. You'll hear a click of the relay. Little click as the relay kicks over <clears throat> as soon as it heats up. The plates are steel, so they you know they hold heat nicely, but it takes them a while to heat up as well. Now, we apparently here are identifying a bug. It should be off right now. For some reason, it's not. So, what we're going to do is plug in the FTDI. off. Hmm. You can see that it, it finally kicked off, so I guess I don't need to plug in the... See, we scared it. All good technological troubleshooting is done by scaring inanimate objects, right? If you're geeky enough to be watching this, you're probably geeky enough to understand how people's computer problems magically disappear when you show up. I love that, right? So let's see what the problem with that would have been. Problem could have been generated by the two delay statements, but those in total only uh, constitute about one and a half seconds, so that doesn't make any sense. I'm guessing that that's a bug um, or just a little bit of an unexpected behavior having to do with coming out of that while loop in the setup um, portion of the sketch since it's shut off <coughs> I'm not going to worry about it at this point but you can see this is a fairly new project it's a really nice green though I did have to um, you can see how bright this is this green LED Blue ones even worse. But these things are crazy bright, and that actually is not nearly as bright as it could be. Um, 
I hate how bright some of these LEDs are and how hard they are to, to mask. Um, so what I did was I just used the, an analog light at I think a level of 10 instead of a, a full digital high. Um, so the RGB is pointed to one of the, to three of the PWM pins on the um, Arduino, which is nice because it allows it to not be so freaking bright. You can see in there that's the little, little strip mount power LED on the uh, Arduino board. So it's green now. Um, it cools down. You'll eventually that kick over to blue. Uh, then the reader kick back on. Get back up. There it is. <clears throat> oh, there it went. Cool. I, really, I really enjoy the blue uh, with at this little brightness. Uh, it's a really saturated blue. It's really clean. Uh, that's just uh, an LED that I got from Spark Fun. They're like a buck ninety-five. It's, you know, because it's from Spark Fun, so of course a little bit pricier than. You want it to be, but you know, provide excellent convenience and everything in place. And they're good people. Customer service, extra, extra key. Watching them then. I'll see you. When it's. It's about to change. Coffee and it's gonna pull back down to 